So it's the beginning of turn round four. It is Germany's turn. What will Sire do now? Guys, welcome back to Axis and Allies, the garrison. Once again, Detroit here coming from the bunker in Rochelle Park, New Jersey. Welcome back to uh, this episode of the YouTube Wars. Okay, so it's the beginning of turn four. Germany goes. Question is, what will Sire Blood do? Field Marshal Sire Blood. Okay, so he's got several choices. Will he surprise us once again? Maybe he will. Sired has definitely shown the capacity uh, and the willingness and the ingenuity to surprise us all. Let's see what happens. Guys, as always, enjoy the show. Let me know what you think. By the way, I look forward to your commentaries. I look forward to what you guys have to say, what the, strategy, what the strategies are about. If you guys see something that maybe you guys disagree or agree with, let us know. I want to know. Anyway, enjoy the show. I'll be back shortly. All right, so here we are. This is the current ground situation on the Eastern Front. Uh, you could definitely see that uh, Germany uh, is de uh, on the Eastern Front is thrusting inwards towards Russia. So the entire front, all the way from Belarus, Eastern Poland, Baltic States, Leningrad, even Karolia and Archangel, a uh, substantial number of uh, forces attacking Russia. Okay, so definitely that is what it's considered to be the front right now. Okay, let's go to the Western Front, uh, if there is one at all. Uh, very, uh, this region is very lightly um, composed of troops. There is a lot of Air Force, that's for sure. Okay, so the question then is that I have is, what will Sire do? Will Sired continue his thrust inwards, Barbarossa full throttle, or will he attempt something different? Hint, hint. May he consider sea lion again? Well, we shall find out. Okay, uh, definitely interesting. Okay, so let's go ahead and see what the purchases were that uh, the Germans made. German high, high Command decided to purchase five uh, IPCs worth of uh, dice. See if it rolls for its technology. If uh, in order to get a technology, you need to roll a five or six, and that's exactly what happened. Sire rolled a five out of five die, and he was able to get his technology. Normally, the technology is kept a secret, but being that it's his turn already, he declared what the, te the technology is. Okay, the technology that he went is for super bombers. Now, super bombers have the capacity that they roll at uh, an additional die. So that's two dice, uh, I believe, plus your two. Okay, so bombers are very powerful. Super bombers, extremely powerful. So, Sire has 60 IPCs. He invested five in technology. Two bombers, three infantry, four artillery pieces, and three of those four artillery pieces are my motorized. I simply ran out of artillery, so I'm using my motorized or self-propelled artillery as regular artillery. Also, one armored unit, one armored division for uh, this turn. So, interesting purchase. All right, we'll be back shortly with the combat movements. Stand by. Okay, so here we are. Let's go over the order of battle. Okay, uh, in Ukraine, okay, the Germans are attacking with three infantry divisions, one artillery and one mechanized infantry divisions. They're defending two Russian infantry divisions against uh, those units already mentioned. All right, Western Ukraine, you have one infantry, one artillery, one armor divisions attacking a single Soviet infantry division. Okay. Belarus, you have one armor division, one infantry attacking one Russian infantry division. And Smolensk, you have two artillery divisions bombing uh, one infantry division, division, Russian, supported by a bomber. Remember, this bomber attacks with the strength of two. So it's uh, very effective here, the attack. All right. Oh, 
what happened to the rest of the Germans? They're gone. Yes, they're gone because they're going off on a sea lion. Check it out, guys. Sorry, blood. Doesn't stop to surprise us, okay? All right, so the Germans boarded their infantry, a total of seven infantry, okay? And landed on Scotland, okay? On the post. The Germans simply boarded their transport ships and sailed over and just walked into Scotland. All right, oh, I'm forgetting. By the way, over here, back on the Eastern Front, the German army just walked into Volgo, uh, uh, Volgo uh, Vologda, excuse me, with one infantry division and blitzed an, an armored division and mechanized infantry division into the Urals. Okay, so the Germans are now deep, deep into Russia, unopposed at this point in time. They're outflanking the Russians. All right, so let's go back to the Atlantic. Um, the Germans are also uh, performing a strategic air raid. They're bombing the industrial complex in England. Okay, that's going to be two bombers and two fighters providing uh, escort. Of course, the British did not, the Royal Air Force, the RAF, did not scramble. Again, they did not scramble because it's uh, useless uh, to do so. They will most likely get shot down. All right. One German fighter coming from Paris. Okay, one German air wing taking out the two naval transports, the British naval transports off the coast of Gibraltar, Sea Zone 91. All right, and that's it for... Um, our attacks for Germany. We shall come back shortly with the results of a uh, of battle after the order of combat. We'll be back. All right, let's review or recap the order of battle here, uh, or the results of the order of battle. The single German fighter uh, was able to successfully attack and sink those two naval transports, British. It landed in Gibraltar. Okay, the industrial air raid is very successful for Germany. A total of 27 points of damage on that factory, that industrial complex in London. So, in effect, that factory is out of commission. Very, a lot of damage. Okay, the attacking aircraft, the two bombers went back to Western Germany. All right, and the, its escorts back to Holland. Okay, all right, the... Amphibious operation in Scotland, successful. Total of seven infantry divisions were landed north of London in Scotland. All right. Uh, these other two battles were just walk-ins. The battle for Valaka and the Urals. The Germans just blitzed through those two uh, territories. Um, battle of Smolensk also. Uh, the Germans sustained some casualties there. They lost one artillery. The Russians lost one infantry division. This was uh, also a successful battle for the Germans, okay? Uh, the Germans were able to take Western Ukraine and uh, uh, Ukraine itself also, okay? There were losses on both sides for these battles. All right, let's go on to the non-combat movement. So very, very successful turn for the Germans. The Germans are definitely moving deep into Russia at this point in time. We'll be back. All right, uh, let's go over some of the non-combat movements that uh, the Germans made. Germans took their two fighters, tactical and a fighter that were in Libya, tactical bomber and a fighter, and landed them in Paris. Okay. They also took their bomber, that was in Tunisia, uh, took one infantry division, performed a airborne landing, okay, dropped off that infantry division in Gibraltar to further reinforce the, that territory. The bomber then landed in southern France. Okay, I already mentioned that the attacking aircraft respectively went back to Holland and Western Germany. Okay, the bomber from that performed that attack in Smolensk is already back in Germany. 
All right. He also, uh, the Germans also moved a few of their triple A's into Western Ukraine and Ukraine, as well as Baltic states and Smolensk to provide a triple A protection just in case if the Russians use their air force. All right, let's see. Let's turn around some of these battle markers to indicate that they're now German. Okay. Pretty substantial when you look at the map, how much of the territory is already occupied by German forces. How much of the Russian motherland is actually already uh, occupied. All right, so let's go with the placement of units. Um, we have here one infantry division and one artillery division being placed in Archangel. Okay, the rest of... Uh, is going to go into Western Germany. It's going to be four, three artillery, one armored division, two infantry divisions, and two bomber squadrons are now being placed. So that makes it a total of four, four bombers in Germany, four bomber air wings or squadrons. So that's four in Western Germany, one bomber wing in, in Germany proper and another bomber wing in southern France. That's six bombers. Wow. Pretty strong stuff. Very interesting, Cyrus. Very interesting. So, to recap, uh, actually, let's do the income tracker. I believe that Germany collects 55 IPCs. Got a couple of national objectives, which bumps it up to 65 IPCs. So Germany is now collecting 65 IPCs for Germany. Guys, let me know what you think. Let me, uh, I want to hear your thoughts and commentaries in reference to what, how the strategy is working for the Germans. Is it an effective strategy? Does it have potential? Do you see flaws? And also, if there are flaws, there got to be strengths, because I'm sure there are a lot of strengths, a lot of options here for the Germans right now. All right, guys, so it is the end of the beginning of round four. It is Russia's turn. What will War Torn do? How will the Russians respond to this a very aggressive German player, Sired Blood. All right, guys. Hope you enjoyed this episode uh, of uh, Axis and Allies, the, the Garrison, the YouTube Wars series. It is War Torn's turn. Russia comes up next. As always, guys, don't forget to bunker down and play.